Hey everyone, welcome back to Simpit Academy. Today we look at the A10C left console starting from the panels at the back. Um, most of the, I mentioned this several times before, the way aircrafts work, regardless of which aircraft, all the important things, all the common things that you need to use are on the front or main console. The side consoles are usually for startup, uh, much less frequently used panels. The further back it goes, the less they get used. Okay, so um, given that we are looking at those furthest back today, means that they will be seldom used. Some of them are not even functional. Okay, like the KY fifty eight um, encryption in many aircrafts, but most of them are not used at all. Then the anti G um, that we see here as well, things like that. So, but if you want the complete look, we can build a panel, add the switches, add the knobs. Um, it's up to you whether you want to wire them at all. If you don't, then you save some ports on your Arduino or HID. So today we look at these five panels, starting with the anti-G and then the arm um, ground safety, the store volume controls, the antenna, and the KY58. So before we begin the side consoles, I bought this um, frame from Lynx DK. I think he's no longer in business. His website is down um, and he's not responding to emails. So I bought, I started buying the, just the, the frame. Then I bought the Desus rails. Um, they are all calculated and done already. It was simple. I didn't want to bother making my own. I, I could have 3D printed them, but a lot of measurements. Um, and also this one for the throttle, the Warthog throttle, it was convenient. So these are the only things I bought. So now the A10 um, built its mainly using uh, Romeo Kilio's uh, PDFs he has kindly shared with us so you can um, get it from his website the Warthog project so as in the my one of my earlier episodes um, the AHCP front console I showed you guys to how to use ins Inkscape to import PDFs, trace the um, the outline of the panels and all the the holes, and even the the text right that will come in, and um, then you export as SVG. So once you do that, you import SVG. You select the ones that you want. You know, highlight. You, you don't highlight everything because you highlight even the back panel. You do. You do back panel, then you do the the top panel. You know, you group them one at a time. So once you group all those that you want, like for example, we want the shape of the panel and the holes, then you come to draft workbench and click on this, and you create a sketch. Then you maybe select you know other numbers here, which will highlight the text. Then create another sketch. You know, you build basically build them separately. So I have shown this. In other videos so I will not try to repeat if not it becomes very repetitive okay um, if you guys have seen my earliest videos on explaining Arduino and switches and wiring different kinds of switches um, it will give you the foundation so I do not want to keep repeating the same thing so I'll go a bit faster all right so starting with the back panel for the anti-G, you, you import 
um, the SVG from the PDF that you trace, right? Then you select whatever you want. So this is the back panel. Sorry, this is the anti G panel, and we start with the back panel. It doesn't do anything. It just have big enough holes for this two to go in. This is a uh, basically a metal push button, right? With with um, I added uh, a ring, okay. And then here, this is some kind of bolt that I got from a hardware store. Um, I think Ace Hardware. All right, then you add text. So this one doesn't do much. The um the inner hole I always use the six thirty two imperial size, uh, which is like three point six mm, and then the bigger ones are for this X uh screw, okay. So this is simple. All right, you just um make circles big enough for whatever you are doing. Right. So I'm just giving you an example. As usual, the hardware, the the kind of buttons and switches that you use determines the whole, um, the size of the hole, right? And also the screws that you use. So this is what I do. Uh, next, see this is the push button, right? It, uh, this is the, the diameter is like sixteen mm. So they have different sizes. So this one is 16mm, it just fits in here. Okay. Um this one will be much bigger, the whole it, it's not to size to the actual thing. Okay. So top panel. Now top panel you determine the size, like I said, the diameter of my push button is 16 mm. So this is the size and see the, the black lines are what Romeo Kilo use right so my this one is bigger and again this one is bigger um, and even the text I am gonna change it so anyway okay now I draw two circles and you pad it and then it will become uh, like a embossed ring okay like this all right and then the button is just small enough to sit inside Okay, and then you secure it with a nut underneath. Then the text, I find this one too small, and I just write my own text. Okay, to do this, basically you just draw lines and then you trim them. How to do trimming? Look at my earlier videos. So, that is anti-G, that's all done. Um, you don't even need to wire it, so just for show, okay. Next, uh, ground safety panel, starting with the back panel again. So um, this is big enough for the whole toggle to go through, right? The locking, the holding of the panel, everything is done from the top panel. So the back panel doesn't do anything. Um, and then the top panel, we secure the three, you know, um, metal screws to this back panel. Okay, this back panel is just to always slightly bigger than the top panel at the side you know the width and the height um, and then we secure the back panel with the, this kind of um, hex screws okay so this one doesn't do much um, now the top panel top panel we have two locking holes okay it's a good practice to always do both in case for whatever reason you need to rotate the toggle around this is the hole for a big toggle right um we have small toggles big toggles you need to know the dimensions and they are kind of fixed if you keep using the same kind of big toggles same kind of small toggles the size will always be fixed then the pull up the pull to turn toggles are somewhere in the middle okay so if you make a catalog of all the sizes then you always just pick the right diameter to cut so um, you may not use exact same size as you know same kind of toggles as what as what Romeo Kilo use so you have to know the dimension of your switches so this is the just the hole right and then this is the bottom part bottom recess you you draw this 
um, these holes are for the locking hole this is for the bottom recess the nut okay um, to hold the locking ring okay and then the top recess basically we pocket downwards okay from the top we pocket downwards uh, this is the size uh, I'll show you in a bit now this one the text I did not do it together with the top panel I make it separate because it's a different color the top panel I usually print it in black PLA then this one it will be very hard to print without smudging all over you know the black so I just you either print this in red if you don't have red PLA then you spray paint the whole thing or brush paint the whole thing red okay the 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 background here and then you at the top you emboss the words and the arrows then you just use a white um marker acrylic marker um to make everything white okay this is the style i the method i use for all the panels now i actually have my ams um from bamboo i can merge them but if you the, but the changing of the colors uses a lot of PLA um, if you want it simple just emboss everything and draw with a white marker okay if you want it flush you need an AMS to change colors layer by layer you will always print two colors so um, there's a bit of trick here so here um, this is Japanese I don't really read Japanese but there's English too so basically you see a toggle will have a nut below to to hold the the lock ring the lock ring points upwards then you have a top another um, nut right highlighted in blue to lock it down to hold the toggle down so up and down both it clamps to to this panel which is the top panel so normally ignoring this for a minute normally you have a lock ring okay that will go through this groove here and it will if you have a hole it goes through here the hole will secure the toggle in the groove and not rotate you cannot do both right the lock ring and this yeah, you choose either one in this case we have a cover we are not going to use this lock ring we have the groove here to hold this in place right but the problem is in this case we the cover the toggle that we are using is a special one we want an on off and this bracket means momentary okay we want one side of it to be momentary um, I'll explain why later so the problem is when you have a groove the on side is latched okay the the side of the groove is always latched and the other side is momentary we want this to we want the momentary to be here to be in the down position but because this thing the groove is like this you cannot turn it the other way around okay the groove will fit in here so that's a problem so it's the the toggle is not pointing the right way okay that's why i i cross this out so the correct way is you file away or use dremel you know um and cut it cut off sand or file this away rotate the toggle such that the groove points up we are no longer using the groove okay we are going to use the lock ring protruding up here that's why we have two holes protruding up here to hold down this right but what's going to prevent this from rotating we the recess here this this dotted line right that's why we put the recess so it's like um, one thing securing the other the lock ring secures the toggle the toggle and this thing um, with the the toggle cover the base we put it in here also to help 
make this not you know um fidget around the most important thing is the momentary side which is the opposite side of the groove needs to be pointed down okay then it will momentary off and on the the up the on part is latch all right so this is where the magic happens we have one button for the cover to open and close we have one button for the toggle on off but we're using a two posi a three position toggle instead of a two this one pin normally is an on off which is a two way toggle but here we're using a three way because i learned this trick from somebody i can't remember who um, back when we didn't have discords um, it was all ed forums right <clears throat> the cockpit um, section somebody um, came up with this solution <clears throat> um, basically when you have the cover okay when it's open it's fine you can you can turn the toggle up and down when you close the cover and you push the cover a bit more it will push down the momentary and you hold that it, it, it's strong enough to not you know pop back up so you push it down you will close the cover which will activate this cover close okay once you lift the cover a little bit it releases the the momentary side being pushed down okay again we trigger this cover open and then we are free to you know flip the toggle and activate this actual toggle all right i will demo in a while but this is a very smart um, way now the f15e i did it without this way um, i use uh, magnets because um, it requires you to be able to close the cover without pushing down any toggle there's a hole in the middle to let the toggle stay in the up position um, you know when you close the cover this one we if you don't have a hole like in the a10 if you close the cover it will push the the toggle down okay so we cannot use the same method the a10 um we use this then the f15 we have a hole and we want to toggle to stay up then we we don't use this push down momentary toggle method okay so this one works for the ground safety and later we'll see the same thing is required for the ky58 um, toggle with the cover as well so same solution okay <clears throat> so this is the best part <clears throat> okay next the stall is basically <clears throat> two potentiometers right two knobs <clears throat> you this is the back panel you have holes enough for the whole body of the part to go through okay it doesn't do anything basically just like that you just pat had it um the back panel is always 3 am mm and the top panel is always 6 mm so now top panel you have two holes for the the part um shaft to go through all right and the smaller hole to secure it to the back panel then this thing is for the hex screw for the back panel so you add some words some lines you pat them okay here we have a top recess because we are putting the nut and locking the shaft from the top not from the bottom all right now um if you are not familiar with arduino or analog this is an analog parts tend to have noise and in DCS, if you use Arduino, they tend to a lot of knobs that use parts. You will see the knobs dancing about. They tend to jiggle. Okay, um, if you use like Bartner uh, boards, 
which can also handle analog, I think they suppress the noise and they don't um you don't see pots dancing about. Okay, the other way is to use encoders, which is a digital input that requires two pins, okay, uh clockwise and counterclockwise. This one you have um ground and five volt. If you have multiple pots, they all share the ground and share the five volt. Okay, you can you can daisy chain them. And then each one has a middle one unique for the analog signal. Okay, so like A0, A1, whatever you have 15. The good thing about the Mega is all these analog ones are not just for parts. You can use the same pin like a digital pin as well. Obviously not vice versa. Analog has to stay here. They cannot be used on the digital side. But the digital side uh, digital inputs can also be used here okay so this is how you wire if you get it wrong that's just flip the wiring around now this is the um, a1 a2 okay um, obviously you can start with a0 so this is nothing um, complicated the default when when a switch is designated apart the basic code it will appear in the basic code if you don't want to use a part then you have to switch to advanced DCS BIOS code then you'll see the encoder uh, version okay um, third panel antenna panel okay this one is three toggles three-way three-way two Oh, this is three way two. Okay, this is a pull to turn. Okay, um, this is the back panel, and I have it straight like this. It's a special. This pull to turn is a smaller toggle. All right, so it looks like this. So this we have the locking holes for the the toggles. Uh, I believe this will be a big toggle. Small toggles I don't bother with locking holes. So top panel. Top panel when it's a three-way toggle, um, I have this longish, you know, oval. Um, if it's round, then it's a two-way. If it's like longish like this, it will be a three-way toggle. So this is a hole for a pull to turn toggle. Um, this is the bottom, the bottom recess. Okay, for the nut and this one for the locking hole so see this is the pull to turn on this yeah, it's just one here okay um on this one and these are the normal toggles so this is bios code oh. this is strange okay there's an off in the middle here which made me think it's a three-way, but the code shows a two-way. IFF EQ, yeah, this one, the code is two-way. Okay, anyway, you guys can verify that. So, next is, um, the last panel is the KY58. Um, basically secure secured comms um, that has to do with encryption of signals so this one the top panel is like just three quarter not all the way okay and the toggle this toggle sit on the back panel and then you have um, three rotary switches and two toggles this one the delay one is actually not functional so actually three toggles right one two three okay so um back panel then we have another one that is here that is the recess like this okay this one i showed it as a pad up um, i think i'm padding up here 
instead of down because this is too thin so you pad up then the normal holes this is still the back panel all right so you see um, the way I cut out is different from the one that was in the PDF okay you be flexible and change whatever you like so this is the bottom the bottom recess for the nuts for all the toggles and all the rotary switches okay and then the locking hole so top panel you have text um, holes actually I normally do holes first I pet uh, so I yeah I pet the whole panel then on top of the panel I do the text okay so bottom recess so now we do the text and we pet them if you wonder how I do this again look at my earlier videos this has been repeated like 30 times from the F15 and the earlier A10 uh, videos as well this one you basically draw this first pat it and then add the text pat the text so it's like one sketch above the other right first sketch is to draw this panel and cut the holes another sketch is to draw the text at this height then a third sketch to draw this rectangle and a fourth sketch to add the text above this okay layer by layer now um, this is the DCS BIOS part basically all the switches now one thing to note here is these are all multi-purpose multi-position switches right you see this one here um, the mode and this one as well okay but this one they are not using a multi-purpose even though physically it's a multi-purpose uh, rotary switch which is normally a multi-position switch they are using a three position so normally you have one two three right if you use a rotary switch this one three position basically it's just a uh, two legs like a toggle so you put this um physically you use a rotary switch code wise you use this and it works okay i i in the beginning i use a special switch that you can you know turn left and then turn right um, you don't have to just a normally rotary switch and this code and it will work okay this is simplified always try to improve and simplify things so and this this one we mentioned earlier like the ground safety panel um, momentary switch down push down by the cover right once you lift the cover the momentary part jumps up to the off position then it activates the cover open then you can flip up and down the toggle which is this one once you push down the cover it pushes down and closes this and activates this cover close all right so uh, simple um, and cool solution so that's it for all the panels today okay this is the done uh, the finished product two toggle covers and toggles right this is this was added painted everything I think this this whole thing warped maybe stayed in the sun too much anyway see I always emboss text put white acrylic pen on it um, if you guys want to know how to make knobs you can design knobs all these are very simple knobs which um, there are many examples in the f15 build all right this is a standard knob um, that came with some switch so yeah these five panels are relatively simple okay so now let's um Take a look at the toggle with the covers in action.